When I was first learning Java in college, I remember one of the first things that really stumped me was static versus non-static variables and methods. It just wasn't clicking for me and I felt so lost. So if you feel the same way, believe me, it's not just you. Here we'll go over exactly what the static keyword means for both fields and methods with plenty of examples, and you'll know exactly when to make something static or non-static. But first, I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description. There you'll find over eight hours of exclusive video lessons covering dozens of Java topics. So if you haven't yet, go check it out now. So what is static versus non-static? Well, it's often helpful to start with an example, so let's do that here. So here I have my cat class. Now this cat class has a few fields, the cat's name, its age, the number of lives it has remaining, because we all know cats start with nine, and also this method, Meow. Now, if you notice, all these fields on this method are non-static. None of these have the static keyword. What that means is all of them only apply to individual cat objects and not to the cat class itself. Now, let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So to demonstrate, let's go over to our main method here and let's go ahead and create a new cat object like this. So cat my cat equals new cat. And then, of course, we can say my cat dot meow. We can call this meow method on our individual cat object. However, what we can't do is say cat the class dot meow. The cat class can't meow. Only individual actual cats can meow. That's what non-static means. They make sense and apply only to individual cat objects and not to the class itself. And that kind of makes sense, right? Remember, we can think of a class as kind of a blueprint for creating objects of that class. This cat class isn't an actual cat. It's just a blueprint of what a cat has and what it's able to do. So a cat has a name, an age, a number of lives remaining, and a cat can meow. So we can use our cat class to create individual cats, and then those individual cats can meow but we can't just tell the cat blueprint to meow. It just doesn't make sense. So non-static methods can only be called on individual objects. Now the same goes for these fields here, the name, the age, and the number of lives remaining. These are also non-static. So we can go back to our main method here and take our myCat object and set its name like this, myCat.name equals Stella. And I can set Stella's age, myCat.age, equals eight. And of course, you can create more than just one individual cat object. You can create as many as you want. And since the name and age fields are non-static, each individual cat object that you create can have its own separate name and age, and they don't conflict with each other. The cat class itself doesn't have its own name and age, just each individual cat does. So if I tried to just take my cat class and set its name equal to George, that just doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. And I get an error that tells me this non-static field name can't be referenced from a static context. It's just telling me, hey, this name field is non-static, so it only makes sense in the context of an individual cat object not the cat class. So then if that's non-static, what are static methods and fields? Static methods and fields are not different per each individual cat object. And one example of a static field that we can add to our cat class is perhaps a field that holds the total number of cat objects that have been created throughout the life of our program. We would wanna make that static because that's a common value that's shared among all the objects of the cat class and isn't different per each individual cat. So to make that, we would declare a private static int and we'll just call it cat count and we'll initialize it to zero. Static fields can of course also be public or protected or whatever, but in this case, we want our cat count to be private. So it can't just be manipulated by other classes all around the program. We wanna have full control of it here in this class. So then we can take our static cat count field, and then every time the program creates a new cat, we want to increment that. Now that will only happen down here in our constructor. So in here, we can just say cat count plus plus. So now every time a cat is created, we'll increment our cat count. That way we can keep track of the total number of cats we created throughout the program. So now that we're keeping track of the number of cats created throughout our program, how do we actually access that count from outside of this class? 
Well, that's actually where a static method is perfectly suited. So we can create a standard getter method for this cat count field, but we'll make the getter method static so that we can get it through the cat class itself and we don't have to get it through an individual cat object. So then down here we can say public static int get cat count. And then all we have to do in that method is return cat count. And then back over in our main method, we can call that method on the cat class because it's static. So we can say cat dot get cat count. And then to make sure that's working, we can go ahead and print out our cat count both before and after we create our cat object like this. So if everything's working right, it should print out zero here at the beginning of the program before any cats are created. And then one here at the end after it's been created. So let's check it out. And yes, looks good. Now it's important to note that non-static fields and methods can never be used without calling them on an individual object. And we know that because we can't just call cat, you know, our class dot name. Now, similarly though, let's go back over to our cat class inside this static get cat count method that we created. Now inside this static method, we are not allowed to refer to any non-static fields. So inside this static method, I couldn't print out this cat's age. You'll see here, I get an error that a non-static field can't be referenced from a static context. And the reason is that it just doesn't make sense. Non-static fields only make sense in the context of an individual object, and they can be different for each individual object. So inside a static method, when you're kind of operating at the class level instead of the individual object level, it just doesn't make any sense to refer to any non-static field. So it's not allowed. However, the opposite is not the case. Technically, you can access static fields and methods through an individual object. So if we go back to our main method here, now technically I am allowed to call my cat dot get cat count. As you can see, I'm not getting any errors here. So here I'm calling a static method from an individual object. However, this is discouraged and you're going to get a warning like I'm getting here. It's saying this static method get cat count is being accessed via an instance. And it's encouraging you to change it to use the cat class to access it instead of the individual object. And so if I want to do that, which I should, I can just click this suggestion here and it'll fix it for me. So you should always access static methods and fields through the class and not through any individual object. So you might ask why though, if it works through an individual object, why not just use one? What does it hurt? Well, the reason is that it can be misleading and confusing. If someone sees my cat dot get cat count, they might think they're getting some kind of a count that only applies to this individual cat, when in fact it applies to the class as a whole. This is even more important when you're modifying something. So perhaps you had a static method that modified something on that class, if somebody sees that being called with an individual object, they might think, oh, I'm just changing this value for this individual object, when in fact they're changing it for the whole class. So that's why it's important to always access these static fields and methods through a static context, through the class, and not through any individual object. Another great example where you'll see static fields used all the time is for constants. Constants are variables that don't ever change. They stay the same throughout the entire runtime of your program. So for our cat class here, one value that we might want to have in our program that would be the same for every cat would be a maximum number of lives a cat has, which is of course nine. So up here we can have a public static final we use the final keyword to make it a constant so it can't be changed later. If you want to learn more about final, I have a whole video on final here. It'll be an int and we'll call it max lives. And of course, we'll set it equal to nine. So this is just saying that for any cat, no matter how many lives it might have remaining here at any given time, the maximum number of lives for any cat is nine. And you can retrieve that value for whatever you need, both inside the class here or outside the class just by accessing it through the class name because it's public and it's static. 
So for example, maybe it makes sense that when every cat is created, we start its number of lives remaining with the number of max lives. That would make sense. So down here in our uh, constructor, while we're creating a new cat, we can set its lives remaining equal to max lives. And if for some reason we wanted to access this max lives field from outside the cat class, so back over here in our main class, because that field is static, we can access it directly on the cat class itself. So we can say cat dot max lives. And we can print that out if we like, just to prove that it works. Go ahead and run it. And yes, we get our maximum lives of nine. So the overall question, how do you determine whether you should make any given field or method static or non-static? Well, if the method or field that you're creating only makes sense for an individual object, an individual instance of that class, or if it has to be different for every object of that class, then it will have to be non-static. But if it's something more at the class level or something that should be the same or a shared value among all of your class, then it probably makes more sense to be static. Like I said, I totally understand that this can be really confusing at first. It absolutely was for me. But I promise you, after a while, it will sink in. And this whole static versus non-static thing will be something you hardly even have to think about. And as always, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like. And if you didn't, go ahead and leave a dislike and shout at me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me. I will see you next time.